Should you start playing on electric guitar or acoustic guitar? Is there really a big difference between the two? It seems pretty obvious, but there are some nuances to consider. On today's episode, we'll dive into the difference between electric and acoustic. Some of those differences are obvious, some of them not so much. Whichever way you lean, acoustic or electric, today's episode will provide some valuable perspective on the guitar in general, whether you're shopping for your very first electric or you're just wondering, which one should I start on? Hey, TAC family, welcome to episode 298 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Yes, just two more episodes until episode 300. Holy smokes, I can't even believe it. So I have to kick things off by saying thank you. You make this show possible. Without you watching this show, this show doesn't exist. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. This show is packed full of inspiration and fun designed to help you get more progress, fulfillment, and joy from your acoustic guitar journey. Throughout today's episode, I will be keeping you in the loop with some acoustic news you can use, including the most inspiring guitar playing life hero. Yes, you heard that correctly. A must watch blues documentary that just so happens to be free, a gaggle of new music and much, much more. But first, Let's talk about electric guitars versus acoustic guitars. What are the differences? You know, when I was first conceptualizing this show, it actually ended up on the cutting room floor. I didn't think there was enough there. But then I thought about my own guitar journey. I started out playing electric guitar. I was a metalhead. I had a BC Rich Mockingbird. Goofy guitar, very much a metal guitar. From that guitar, I started to very gradually work into the acoustic guitar world. And once I entered that world, it seemed as though the electric guitar just kind of fell off the wayside. I didn't really care much for it. I wasn't really interested by it anymore. But in the last, oh, let's say two or three years, I've been bit by the electric guitar bug. And I've brought a whole new perspective on how different they are from acoustic guitars. Now you might be sitting there thinking, uh, duh, they're totally, they're 180 degrees different. Yes, they are, but this show, the purpose behind the show is really to start to show some of those differences. So when you're thinking of crossing over to electric guitar, when you're thinking of maybe buying an electric guitar for the first time, you can start to conceptualize why it's different instead of just saying, yeah, it's different. So I've got a list of a couple different aspects of the electric guitar that are very different from the acoustic guitar. And then at the end of this list, I'm gonna share with you my prescription on what guitar you should start out when you're first beginning your guitar journey. So without further ado, let's dive into the list. And the first difference is general style. Okay, when you look at acoustic guitars, it seems as though there's just quite simply different sizes. You've got a Dreadnought, you've got an OM, triple O, double O, single O, yada, yada, jumbo, et cetera. With electric guitars, it's a little bit more, dare I say, free form. You've got solid body electric guitars. You've got fully hollow electric guitars. You've got semi-hollow electric guitars. You've got some offset odd body shapes. There are many different styles of electric guitar. And it just go, it goes well beyond just the simple outline of the body shape. You know, when you think acoustic guitar, like I said, you've got a lot of similar styles, just different sizes. With electric guitar, one to the next is, is very, very different. The next difference is weight and size. You know, acoustic guitars for the most part are pretty darn light and they're actually pretty big. Well, electric guitars are indeed the opposite of that. Generally speaking, electric guitars, think solid body guitars, are pretty small, but they're heavier. Okay, so there's a little bit of um, comfort factor here. While acoustic guitars are bigger, they are lighter. While acoustic guitars are smaller, they are heavier. Again, some of this stuff seems obvious, but these are the very things that I wish I had in my brain when I was starting to look at electric guitars, when I was first starting guitar shopping in general. Uh, next up, we've got string gauge. This is a huge difference, and I think one of the most notable differences that impacts the player. String gauge is wildly different on electric, and the tension on the strings is much less because of the smaller string gauge. A standard electric guitar set is, uh, if, you, if you get tens, uh, the, going from the high E to the low E, it's 10 gauge, 13 gauge, 17 gauge, those are all plain steel strings, meaning they're not wound, and then you have 26, 36, and 46, okay? 
If you look at an acoustic guitar set of strings, a light gauge set of acoustic guitar strings, you have a 12 gauge, 16, which is plain steel. Then you go to wound strings right away, 24 gauge, 32, 42, and 53. So there's quite a disparity between string gauges. And most common electric guitar sets are nine or 10. They refer to it as the lightest gauge, whereas acoustic sets, the most common gauges are 12s or 13s, lights, mediums, respectively. So definitely something to consider and probably the most wowing difference between the two. You know, if you go from playing an acoustic guitar to an electric guitar, a lot of times the strings feel like spaghetti noodles. They're just easy to bend. It seems like they're easy to fret. I mean, overall, it seems like electric guitar in terms of fretting, in terms of the, the um, effort you have to exert, it, it's way easier to fret an electric guitar. I'm not saying acoustic guitar is impossible, but it's, it's a very clear and noticeable difference. Next up, we have scale length. Now, standard scale lengths with acoustic guitar, you're looking at anywhere from 24 and a half, 24 and three quarters to 25 and a half. Now, Ironically enough, electric guitars don't vary all that much, but the range of scale lengths is considerably wider. Uh, as far as electric guitar scale lengths, I'm talking about the nut to the saddle, the distance there, you've got a range of 24 to 27 inches. Some of the more oddball guitars, think like a Fender Jaguar has a much shorter scale length to 24 inches. There's even a, a Rickenbacker, uh, the model that John Lennon played. I wanna say the scale length, <clears throat> excuse me, the scale length of that is like 23 and a half maybe, very tiny, very, very tiny. Uh, and they can all go all the way up to 27 inches or even beyond if you're looking at baritone guitars. But I'm trying to stay in the middle, uh, the most common guitars you'll run into. And when you pair some of those shorter scale lengths with those lighter gauge strings, it feels, well, extra noodly under your fingers. The strings feel extra noodly under your fingers. Uh, the next difference, and this one I think is, Maybe one of those ones that doesn't jump out right at you, but the more you play electric and then acoustic and then electric again, I think you'll notice the difference that the fretboard feels considerably different. Uh, number one, I believe most commonly the nut widths on electric guitars are a little bit smaller, a little bit more condensed, whereas acoustic guitars are wider. But generally speaking, electric guitar fretboards have a subtle radius to them. Actually, I shouldn't say subtle. It's actually a more severe radius, uh, meaning there's a little bit of an arch to the fretboard of an electric guitar. Whereas on acoustic, there is a radius, but it's it's far more great, uh, meaning you don't have this this huge impact on your playing or in terms of in terms of feel. It almost it almost looks flat. Now that being the case, you'll notice that playing an electric guitar when it comes to bends, when it comes to bar chords, it feels maybe a little bit more comfortable. And of course, a lot of that has to do with string gauge, but that radius of the fretboard impacts that as well. Something to take note of next time you go from an acoustic guitar to an electric guitar, or you're just looking at, again, electric guitars for the first time in general. Uh, next up, tone controls, okay. Acoustic guitar, you have no tone controls. Your tone control is your picking hand. If you pick closer to the bridge, you're gonna get a much more crystally, uh, articulate sound, almost brittle sound. If you pick over the sound hole, it's gonna be a much more fat, rounder tone. Well, the same is true on electric guitar, but you have so many more factors at play. Each pickup generally has a volume control. Each pickup generally has a tone control. So you've got a much wider span of tones that you can achieve with an electric guitar. And then if you throw in a guitar that has more than one pickup, you generally have a pickup selector switch so you can impact the tone even further. So in terms of tone variety, electric guitar really wins this battle. Not that it's a battle, but I think you get the idea. Electric guitar, you have so many more options, which in some cases is good. In other cases, it can kind of handcuff you. Generally speaking on my electric guitars, I just either roll the tone all the way down, roll the tone all the way up, and the volume is pretty much always up. I'm not a, a purebred electric guitar player, as you can probably tell. Um, but like I said, I've been bit by the bug big time. I've gotten a couple of really great electric guitars lately, and. Um, I'm into it, I'm into it, which is why I'm sharing this information with you. Um, next up, uh, the difference. In terms of tone, let's stay on the tone train, if you will. You know, electric guitars have pickups and a lot of the varying tones come from the different pickups that are employed on electric guitars. Whereas acoustic guitars, generally speaking, when you think of variety in tone, immediately your brain goes to tone woods. 
Adirondack spruce, Sitka spruce, cedar, mahogany, uh, rosewood on the back and sides, maple on the back and sides, etc. That's generally where you get your tone flavor from. Now, electric guitars, I think the tone wood does impact the sound, albeit minute, uh, I think the pickups play a big role. And with electric guitars, you've got humbuckers, you've got single coils, you've got P90s, you've got overwound pickups, underwound pickups, the list goes on. So in terms of tone on electric guitar, I think we can attribute a lot of that to the pickups, whereas on acoustic guitar, it's, it's the tone woods that you choose. Uh, next up, and this is something, you know, for you folks that are looking to get into electric guitar, Note, you have the price of the electric guitar and then you have the accompanying gear. You gotta have an amp, you gotta have a cable. You're gonna want pedals, let's just be honest. I've been bit by the pedal bug as well. Uh, it's gonna happen, plain and simple, okay? So take that into account when you're getting into the electric guitar world. Yeah, you gotta get that electric guitar, but you've gotta get all the accoutrement as well. With acoustic, you just get the guitar. Maybe a pick and a capo and boom, you're off and running. The next big difference, and this is one that I think is, it, it, it struck me later, actually right before I sat down, and that is setup and repair. You know, when I think of an electric guitar, I think of ease of setup and repair. It's almost like working on a car. There's parts, and all you have to do is modify the parts. You wanna set intonation, there's little screws that adjust the distance of the saddle of the string towards the headstock or back from the headstock. If you wanna adjust neck relief, Truss rod is generally pretty easy to access. So setup and general repair is pretty easy, unless you get into the electrical stuff, then you gotta learn how to solder. That's a whole, that's a whole nother deal. With acoustic guitar, your, your bridge is in a fixed place. So if you wanna adjust the intonation, generally you gotta pull the saddle and adjust the intonation by filing the saddle subtly, either uh, uh, towards the headstock or away from the headstock. And that can become a really big um, pain in the butt uh, for lack of a, a better, more, uh, for lack of a, um, well, let's just put it this way, pain in the butt, okay? I won't say the other thing. Uh, PIA, if you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so set up on electric guitar, far easier. Uh, and it's actually really fun to do because anything that you do, you can undo relatively easy. Not always the case with an acoustic guitar. Uh, and then lastly, uh, general use. You know, when you think of acoustic guitar, in my opinion, I think of sitting down wherever I want, playing whatever I want. Could be on my front porch, could be in my guitar studio, could be in the studio here, could be around a campfire. Electric guitar, I feel like, dictates a certain musical context, generally a band setting, generally a place where you can be loud. So for me, getting into electric guitar, not really the greatest time. I've got a two and a half year old at home and I've got a, a newborn that's just about to be here. So me being loud on electric is pretty much limited to the studio here. So you have to be a little bit more selective about when you play, how you play, how you play and, and who you're playing around. Uh, because acoustic guitar generally is soothing and you can be pretty quiet. Whereas electric guitar, really not so much the case. But you do have the benefit of plugging headphones into an amplifier, which I've been exercising uh, greatly as of late. In fact, check this out. I got one of those universal audio aux boxes. I know I'm going off the rails here. Like I said, I wanted this to be a casual discussion. I got one of those uh, UA aux boxes so I can actually plug my tube amp into the aux box, plug, plug headphones into the aux box, and then from my computer, I can add all these cool effects and stuff. I don't know, very much a detour, but I don't know. I just wanted to expound on that, uh, rather expand on that headphone, headphone talk there. So the synopsis. Where does this put us? Put us. Okay, we obviously know that there's a difference between electric and acoustic, but I want to address the I want to address the question of where should you start. I get this question a lot. Should I start on electric? Should I start on acoustic? Now you might be sitting there saying, you know, I've been playing for a while. I've already made that choice. No big deal. But you might know somebody that's just starting to play. You might yourself be just starting to play and maybe dip your toe in the electric guitar water. So you might be wondering what's the most benef beneficial for me on my guitar journey? In my opinion, it's most beneficial to start on acoustic. You need limited gear, you can play it anywhere, and because of generally longer scale lengths, because of generally thicker gauge strings, you're building necessary strength, okay? Now, I say this with a little asterisk caveat. I always recommend people start on an acoustic guitar. I think it's the most gratifying. It's the quickest route from 
not making sound to making sound. You don't have to think about all the extra gear. Electric, you do have to think about all the extra gear. But the asterisk is this. When you're first learning to play, when you're picking out your first instrument, follow what makes you the most excited. Okay, if somebody's listening to metal music like I was when I was 17, 18 years old, acoustic guitar didn't even come across my radar. I wanted to play electric because I wanted to sound like those bands that I loved. Mostly Slipknot, to be honest. So, of course, I was going to go the electric guitar route. I didn't even think of the benefits that acoustic guitar would bring me. Okay, so that asterisk is pretty important. I want you to follow your heart. What gets you excited to play? If you're into Dan Fogelberg, you're probably not going to do an electric guitar. You're probably going to grab an acoustic guitar. If you're into Metallica, Slipknot, Nirvana, fill in the blank band, you can gravitate towards electric guitar. The choice is yours. I just wanted to separate the two and have you know the differences because I think it's important. It's important to make the, the most wise and informed decision that you possibly can because ultimately I want you to stick with the guitar, whatever that means for you. I don't want you to start and then stop. You know, there was a study done by Fender saying that in uh, guitar players that just start, I, I think I have the stat correctly, 90% of them are not playing after one year. That sucks. That sucks. And I want your guitar journey to be fulfilling, enjoyable, and I want it to be something that's with you for the rest of your life. Hence episodes like these. Uh, so what do you think? Um, did you like this episode? Was it, was it too obvious of a topic for me to talk about? Or did you find value in it? Furthermore, uh, what other questions do you have about electric versus acoustic? I'd love for you to ask me in the comments below. I'm always happy to hear from you in the comments below. I don't respond to a lot of comments down there, but I do read them after every episode. So I feel like I kind of get to know you all through the comments. Anyways, um, and then the, the, final, the final question, I may have already asked this, uh, did this help you? Did this help inform a decision that maybe uh, I would wanna start on acoustic or electric or vice versa? Just kinda curious how this episode landed for you. Now let's go ahead and move to, oh, have I got some juicy stuff for you. Get ready to be inspired. I mean, this, this dose of acoustic news you can use is just, it's one for the ages, let me tell you this. We're gonna kick things off with Buffalo Kin. I've mentioned them before. Uh, a great band out of the Northwest, beautiful harmony, sparse arrangements, great tone. Think, think Gillian Welch and David Rawlings vibe, but they are not copying Gillian Welch and David Rawlings. They are something in and of their own right, and it's something beautiful. So check out Buffalo Kin. Well, I follow them on Instagram, and he posted a cover of Dolly Parton's Jolene. I think I watched this short little snippet. I probably watched it 30 times. Um, it is just intoxicating. It's, it's a cover of Jolene that very much acknowledges the original, but it is very much his own and a delight to listen to. And if, to be honest, if you're gonna do a cover song, if you approach it this way, you're gonna hit a home run every single time. Here's Buffalo Kin playing Jolene. Fun fact, very much aside from acoustic news you can use, um, I'm sitting here in the studio filming right now and I'm like, why is it so hot in here? It's like 65 degrees outside, so it shouldn't be that hot in the studio. Well, I remembered I went to the chiropractor this morning and I got a full dose of icy hot along my spine. Well, the icy hot is in its hot phase right now, so I'm feeling the effects. I just wanted to share that with you so you can kind of share in my um, misery. It's not that bad, but something, something to note. You know, be careful with Icy Hat, I guess. Uh, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the guitarist Pete Dankelson? Pete Dankelson is a young man who has endured, quite literally, a lifetime of challenges. I think to date, I might have this number slightly incorrect, I think he's undergone 37 surgeries. Uh, he was born with a condition, I actually, it's escaping my mind right now, but every turn has been a challenge for him and he maintains, in my opinion, the best attitude 
a world conquering attitude that is beyond inspirational and you need to know about him. If you have not heard him before, uh, please check him out. He's a ripping guitar player, but even more, he is one of the most inspiring humans I've ever come across. He just did an interview with the folks at Sweetwater and I just wanna, I wanna show you just a small little piece of this interview and then I'm gonna tell you something else about Pete, something that, uh, well, you can take action on right away. But first, you need to kinda get a load of his personality. It's intoxicating, it's almost, um, it's it's almost, uh, what's the word for it? It just spreads like wildfire. You hear him talk, he's so positive, and you can't help but walk away from listening to him speak thinking, yeah, I got this, I got this, I can do this. Anyways, without further ado, here's a small snippet of the interview that Sweetwater did with Pete Dankelson. And then of course, when the guitar came along into my life when I was 15, having music as kind of that support crutch and picking up the guitar and playing, that was a big one when that did enter my life. And by the way, folks, when Pete talks about procedures, he's not talking about two, three, four, or even five. How many have you had today? <laughs> I've had a few more than that, that's for sure. It's 37. Good grief. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I can't, to be honest with you. That's <laughs> one of the reasons I hold this man in such high esteem, well, young man in such high esteem, is <laughs> because that would have taken me out of the game, maybe. I'd be sitting on my couch going, why me? Where you've almost got this why not me kind of approach. It's hard to keep that positive attitude up. I mean, you know, you definitely have some of those moments where it's kind of like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Indeed, Pete has a hell of a story. And you might be thinking, man, a story like that deserves a book. Well, consider your wish granted. I feel like a genie of sorts, just popping out, granting wishes. Uh, Pete, Pete has a book out that's entitled, How I Learned to Rock My Life. You need this book, quite honestly. In fact, the interviewer, I can't, I, his name escapes me in that Sweetwater interview, compared his book to David Goggins' book. David Goggins' book, uh, Can't Hurt Me. Uh, one of my favorite personal, uh, one of my personal favorite books, just an inspiring book. This book rivals that book in terms of inspiration and it's much more, well, it's much more guitar centric to be honest. So you need to know about it. Um, here's just a quick little clip of kind of the, the synopsis of the book. Next up, a new guitar builder to me, and maybe to you as well, Howard Feng. I had never heard this name before, not on my radar at all. Michael Watts posted a picture of this guitar, some pictures of this guitar, and I was just in, it, uh, poof, I mean, talk about speechless. I looked at this guitar and I shuffled through the pictures on repeat because I couldn't believe the intricacy of the design and just the, it's kind of a statement piece, to be honest. The, the top has this wild rosette that morphs into some kind of inlay on the top. Just gorgeous. So I wanted to bring up Howard Fang uh, to your attention so you could well be aware of his guitars and also be on the lookout. I believe Michael Watts is gonna do a video on that very guitar here in the coming weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's not out yet, but I assure you that it'll be coming out pretty soon. Uh, Michael is just, he's one of those guys, he just gets his hands on every guitar. I thought I played a lot of guitars. Man, Michael Watts is just, every time I see him, he's playing a new, amazing, small bench luthier guitar. Just so great, just such great stuff. Uh, make sure to follow him for some really geeky guitar stuff as well. Great podcast as well. He interviewed uh, Michael Bashkin recently uh, for his Life on the Fretboard podcast. I think it was that podcast. Could be the Makers podcast. He's got like a dozen podcasts too. Uh, somebody you need to know if you've never heard of him before. And then for uh, to wrap up this first dose of acoustic news you can use, I found a documentary that is just 
I can't believe I had never heard of it before. I, I cannot believe I had never heard of it before. It's named Memphis 69. It's a documentary around the Memphis Country Blues Festival held in 1969. There's a whole story around this festival, where it was located, the artists who were there, and man, the footage is just, it's like a time machine. It's like a time machine. I believe the footage, uh, I found it on Fat Possum Records' YouTube channel. We're gonna look at a quick little trailer of it right now. This is free. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you can put up with some ads, you can watch this on a Sunday night and just roll into your week all blues infused. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the trailer for Memphis 69. <laughs> to the Memphis Country Blues Festival. You'll see blues legends and newcomers like Rufus Thomas and the Barkays, Bucca White, Sleepy John Estes, and Yank Richel, Son Thomas, Reverend Robert Wilkins and family, John Fahey, Insect Trust, Flurry Lewis, Piano Red, Moloch, Johnny Winter, Mississippi Fred McDowell, and so much more. These boys in Memphis and it got me so nervous. <laughs> Come on over to the Overton Park Band Shell this weekend to celebrate 150 years of Memphis, the fourth annual Memphis Country Blues Festival. Just when I thought the icy hot couldn't get any hotter, my back is quite literally on fire. Uh, go ahead and grab your guitar. It's time to see what the TAC family is working on this week. Every single week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, the TAC family rotates through the five essential skills that help you learn songs fast. On Monday, there's a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a Rhythm Guitar Challenge. Friday is a Chord Transition Challenge. Today is Tuesday. The TAC fam is working on a guitar lick, and I think you'll find this lick rather familiar. Here it is. Your Tuesday TAC Guitar Lick Challenge is named Angel Walkie Talkie because it's from the Black Crows song, She Talks to Angels. Now, this is actually three licks, and while they are signature to this song, they actually open up a huge door of creativity and possibility in open tuning, specifically open D tuning. So if you wanna play along with me, go ahead and get your guitar into open D tuning. You're gonna to wanna to take your E string and drop it to a D. Your A string stays the same. Your D string stays the same. Your G string drops to an F sharp. Your B string drops to an A and your high E string drops to a D. So if you strum all six strings, you get a wonderful D major chord. Now, the album, uh, the, the album version of the song is recorded in the key of E, but rather than tune up to an open E tuning, if you wanna play along with the record, uh, open D tuning, slap a capo on the second fret, boom, you are right there. Uh, so let me go ahead and play this lick for you so you can hear how it sounds. And then I'm gonna expand on it a little bit so you can see what possibilities this creates for you in this awesome tuning. Okay, here's how the lick sounds.
throw that little strum in because it very much is that song. Uh, before I get into the nitty gritty of this lick and the doors that it opens for you, TAC fam, this is your daily challenge for today. Go ahead and log in, click on start challenge. That'll take you to the teaching video. Once you're through with that, move to the play along video, pick a speed that's comfortable for you. And don't forget to open up the tab by clicking on that icon in the lower right hand corner. This way you can have the tab and the video right next to one another. So this lick actually exposes something incredibly important and has huge implications on your guitar journey. This lick, as it's written, as I played it, is from the song, no doubt. But one of the things I wanna expand upon here is actually there are two things now that I'm talking through this. It opens up this wonderful opportunity with open tunings. You know, open tunings are pretty forgiving because we can generally hit any string and it'll make sense along with a fretted note. Let me cite this portion of the lick here. All that is, is a descending scale. It's just a descending D scale. But it seems to have much more punch. Why is that? Because we're adding a drone string. Right, and open, uh, open tunings really give you great opportunity to add open strings. Any song that you wanna play, any, any string that you wanna fret, you can generally add an open string to, and it sounds pretty darn awesome. It's a great way to start experimenting with open tunings. Now, specifically, this lick is used as a fill in between that wonderful kind of uh, bouncy chord vamp that happens in this song. It starts out. kind of get the idea. It's used as quote unquote filler between those chord vamps. So not only does this, does this lick actually give you a wonderful gateway into exploring open tunings with drone strings, it also kind of helps you understand how a fill works in between chords. It gives you that timing window of a full measure, or in this case, two measures, to get from one chord to another or to break up something that's monotonous. Maybe say you're staying on one chord. It starts to give you that idea of the timing window you have to add something interesting. But this also exposes something huge, and it has to do with any song you might be learning. And I use this one very specifically. I use this lick very specifically because this lick, you hear it and you're like, oh, Black Crows, she talks to angels. But it's a lot more than that. And I want you to have that lens on whatever song you're learning. If you're learning something, maybe Sweet Home Alabama, the opening to Sweet Home Alabama, yeah, it's very much signature to that song but you can pull the elements from it and have it inform the way that you play other things. If you look at this song, you know, when I first started playing open tunings, I always thought were just limited to a certain song, a singular song. But the more I dig in and the more I start to learn open detuning, the more you start to learn open detuning or any, any sort of tuning, tuning for that matter, you'll start to realize that those signature things from other songs offer some wonderful techniques you can use in your playing broadband, like in this case, adding a drone string, right? Or in this case, understanding that time it takes uh, from one chord to another so you can add these wonderful melodic fills. Just something to chew on as you're learning other songs and you might think, oh, I'm just learning this for this song. Always zoom out and see if it has other implications on your playing. See if it could have another impact or rather a more significant impact on another song you may be learning or writing for yourself. Your second dose of acoustic news contains a boatload of new music for your ear teeth to chomp on. I love that phrase. I don't know where it came from. I'd like to think I coined that phrase, but probably not. I probably heard it somewhere else. I, I just think it's a great visual, right? You're sitting there across from your record player the sound waves are coming out of the speakers and your ear teeth are just nah, 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 the sound waves as they come by. I don't know. It, it works for me. It might not work for you. Anyways, kicking things off with the band Mapache. 
I've mentioned these guys on the Acoustic Tuesday show before, and if you like harmony, if you like male acoustic duos, uh, these guys are for you. Think, um, think uh, like Laurel Canyon vibes. It just very kind of a, um, I wanna say hippie, but that's really, that's too general. Um, just good music. How about we just say good music? They just released a new song called What a Summer, and here it is. More new music is coming for you, and this has a funny connection to the band Mapache. Uh, some years ago, in Bozeman, Montana, there's a venue called The Filling Station. It's your classic roadhouse, right? There's beer cans all over the wall. We're talking like old, old beer cans. It's just a great place to see a show. Very down home. Well, anyways, uh, Suzanne Santo was coming through with her band, and Mapache was opening up. To me, this was like a dream lineup. It was just a great night of music. So incredible. Anyways, uh, your second piece of news here is new music from Suzanne Santo, formerly of Honey Honey. And she's one of my faves. Plain and simple, she's one of my faves. Her voice is intoxicating. Her playing is out of this world. I mean, we're talking fiddle, banjo, guitar, you name it, she can play it. Uh, and her songwriting, it's just absolutely stellar. She just uh, released a new song called Let My Love. It's just a, it's just a vibe. I hate using that word um, because I, I hear it a lot from younger folks and I think it might be overused. But I mean, if I had to describe this song in one word, I, I lean on vibe. I'm sorry if you don't like the word as much as I do, but it is. Uh, here's Suzanne Santos, Let My Love. We're gonna wrap things up with a Montana-based band from right here in Bozeman, Montana. Laney Lou and the Bird Dogs just released a new album named Coyote, and I just love those guys. I love those guys. Uh, I actually taught their banjo player, Matt, uh, some years ago when he first moved to Bozeman, and uh, just have a great connection with that band. Being that they're local, I've always enjoyed their music, and I'm so happy for them that they have this new album out. Again, the name of the album is Coyote. Let's listen to a song off of it named Battlefield. I On those novel music notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show. But first, I'm not gonna say the usual thing. Um, if you have any tips on how to get rid of the icy hot burn, let me know. Do I have to bathe in milk? What's gonna, what's gonna make my back not on fire? Uh, I'd be very curious if you have any remedies. Go ahead and leave those in the comments below. But since I am wrapping up the show, we should also take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, I've been asked about this show topic time after time after time again, and it is time. It's finally time to look at inexpensive 12 string guitars. Next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show, we're gonna have a look at inexpensive 12 string guitars that give you high dollar jangle. 
I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, anyways, that's what's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Before I let you go, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, whether it's on electric or acoustic guitar, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. Thank you for making this show what it is. Until next Tuesday, Guitar Geeks Unite. Take care.